All right, guys, I'm going to do a review on my G3 Sportsman 17 um, boat. Uh, the reason I'm doing this review is because uh, currently I have not seen any online and I wished I'd have had something to look at before I bought the boat. Uh, so I'm going to go over some pros and cons of the boat itself. Um, overall, I'd probably give the boat about maybe three and a half out of five star rating. I've had the boat now, bought it March of 2015, and it is now uh, March 30th of uh, 2017, so it's two years old. Um, it's got a 94-stroke Yamaha on it, um, and uh, I've done some aftermarket, uh, added a couple aftermarket things on it, which I'll go over real quick. All right, so I'm going to go over the cons first of the boat. Um, I've written this down on, on a list so we can find it, or so I can remember it all. All right, first thing I want to go over is screws in the floor. Uh, because this boat is completely aluminum, there's no wood in it whatsoever. There are some screws in the floor that you guys can see there. Um, if you get this boat in rough water, um, it, those screws will vibrate loose. And I feel it's because it's all, all aluminum, uh, which is a good thing. It's the biggest, one of the biggest reasons I picked this boat over a bass tracker. Um, and so what I've done to remedy that, which I did today, and I don't know if it's going to fix it or not, but we'll see, is I actually took them out and put some uh, silicone down in there and screwed them back in. So hopefully the silicone will tighten that up and maybe fix it. All right, next thing I want to go over that's kind of a con. Uh, they work, but they're not that great. Is the uh, gauges in the boat. Gauges uh, work pretty decent, but at night, if you're night fishing at all, they're kind of hard to see. They don't light up real well. Um, they do work. Everything works. Uh, however, this RPM meter here had an issue with where it was a loose connection. Uh, not long after I got it, it was bouncing back and forth. And when I was running, it was kind of hard to keep steady on the RPMs and find out what it, what, uh, RPMs are actual, uh, RPMs are. If you can see that, there's a gauge is there, um, uh, for the, uh, bilge pump, aerator, uh, live well, which I'll go over in a second, lights and auxiliary on and off. Um, everything works pretty well. I haven't had any issues out of it. However, one downfall from this boat, I did not know until after I actually got it. I just assumed it had a full functioning live well. However, it does not. It has a huge live well. It has a 33 gallon split live well. Uh, looks similar to that. Uh, there is no pump out. There is no aerator, but you do have is a, um, aerator nozzle, that little white thing right there. It kicks on when you hit on a automatic it kicks on uh, pumps water in there for one minute every three minutes and but it's surface water um, and it continues it aerates the water as it pumps it in there but um, as far as that goes that's I mean it works I hadn't had a fish die yet believe it or not and I fish with people that have full function live wheels and sometimes there's die I've not had one mine uh, one of mine die and I live in Alabama and it gets very hot here in the summertime but I still hadn't had one die yet um, one thing I'd also like to go over is the seats as you can see, um, they're not the full seats like you would see in a tracker or in the 2016 G3 Sportsman 17s. Um, they're fairly comfortable, but I think that the, the new, newer one, newer version of this boat has a lot more comfortable seats, especially for rough water. If you're riding in rough water, which I'll go over in a second also. Um, back here in the back, um, it has a two, two bank battery charger but i actually have a third battery charger right there because i actually upgraded the trolling motor so it has a 24 volt trolling motor it comes with a 55 pound trolling motor an edge Minn Kota edge uh, i suggest strongly suggest you up, up, uh, grade the trolling motor to at least a 70 pound maxim that's what i went with um maxim pulls this boat at about three and a quarter miles an hour on the gps so it really hit on a windy day because this boat sits up higher than a fiberglass boat uh, really makes a huge difference uh, because if not it wind kind of blows you around so um, anyway one of the other things or some of the other stuff I'd like to the cons are um, let's see what I got here all right the latches latches on all the compartments are plastic they're cheap uh, like I said I'm not gonna sugarcoat anything because I'd want an honest review um, and I've had this boat for a while this is actually my first fishing boat um, I would uh, replace those, or I'm going to eventually. Some of them don't lock like this one here, which is your main tackle storage for, well, it's not your main, but it is a tackle storage. 
Um, I would re I'm going to replace those eventually. And if you wonder what, I you know you probably can see what these little black things are right here that I have. Actually, I got a six year old and I take her with me a lot fishing. I put a bimney top on here, which comes to about the front windshield so she can stay out of the, out of the sun while I fish on the front deck. So I take her with me, but that's, it doesn't come with a boat. That, I just went over that so you'd know. Um, it has two slotted tackle boxes here for the small uh, tackle boxes that you can, that are slotted there. Um, I've got a couple in there. Um, I pr primarily bass fish, but there's a couple in there. They are dry. Um, what I mean by dry is they have this lip here. If it rains, water gets down in there. It doesn't get actually in the tackle. It stays dry. Uh, that's a good thing. Um, however, it, I am kind of disappointed that on the main hole storage, where you would think you would need it the most, it is a not, not a dry storage. It does not have a lip. And when it rains, I can tell you everything in there gets wet if you're out in the rain. Um, I do uh, take that as a con. I wish it was... I had a lip around it and everything stayed dry. They do, for the seat pedestal here, they actually tubed it. Uh, it has tubes in there, so if water gets in there, it drains it away and doesn't get the uh, the uh, storage supposedly wet in there, but it's kind of off or not if you don't have a seal around that, because if the deck gets wet, that's gonna get wet. Um, also, the, the rod locker here, would when it has it has a rod holder or did have which i've taken out which i highly recommend it will only hold about five rods in there i have many more than five so um what i did is take it out and put rod socks on everything and you can hold about 15 or 20 rods in there uh like that and it's fine it'll hold up like eight foot rod um no problem it has this however this uh storage here this main storage here is huge uh you can put uh, the seat in there, this seat here that I got back here on the back, you can put it in there, a uh, cooler, uh, two big, you know, tackle bags, uh, all your uh, life jackets and everything if you need to, and it's still got room. Um, this other locker storage here, which you got to excuse the blood. I caught a fish yesterday and he bled everywhere. I got to clean off the carpet. Um, this locker here is for four lock, uh, storage uh, tackle boxes. It is dry also. However, I would have liked to have seen them made this bigger and just had them this way instead of this way. I actually took this out and underneath here is a, a foam piece. You can actually pull it out. At one time I took it out and I actually put it back in for this review. But you can actually put about 10 tackle boxes in there, even the thicker ones that are about three and a half inches thick um, total in there. I think they just missed the boat on a whole bunch of uh, extra space for storage. If they would have done that, that would have been great. Um, let's see some other things that need to go over um rpms this boat runs uh with the stock with the stock uh prop on it will run on about 38 39 40 miles an hour roughly depending on the load i'm 230 pounds uh with the prop stock is a 16 i mean a stock prop it's a 16 pitch prop um i was running 38 39 by myself well, me and my little girl she's six at the time she was five I guess it would run that now it runs about the same speed I've actually replaced the prop with a 17 pitch only to get the rpms down from 5900 because that's where they're running at wide up and throttle with the stock prop because I felt like that was a little high and I wanted to extend the life of the motor a little bit uh, I think the over rev on this motor is 6200 but I dropped it down to about 5750 or 5800 Runs about the same speed. I wasn't doing it for the speed. Like I said, I just did it for to drop the RPMs a little bit. It still gets, you can get out of a hole in 30 feet if you're up on plane, literally. I mean, it's just straight out of the water at this motor. Uh, the 90 is the max horsepower for this actual model of boat. This, uh, this boat is 17 inches, or 17 foot 10 inches long, and I think it's a 92 inch beam um, on it. Uh, let me see if that goes over everything. All right, the ride in the rough water. It's a dry ride, I'll say that. I hard. I mean, every now and again you'll get a wave that splashes you just a little bit, you know, a little bit of mist, which most, even fiberglass boats I've been in, I've gotten wet doing that. Uh, t when I say rough water, I'm talking about three foot waves or so. Um, this boat, it'll beat you to death. I mean, I'm not gonna lie. In about three, three foot waves, it, you don't wanna go wide open and it'll beat you to death. Um, if you do, uh, if you go about 20, 22, 23 miles an hour, maybe 25 you're fine uh it's not really that bad of course you have to just trim down and try to cut through the waves um 
uh, as far as putting it in a class with a bass tracker, I don't, I've never ridden in a tracker. Uh, they do have a sharper hole. This is a modified V, but they have a sharper hole. So I would think that they would probably possibly ride a little bit better, um, which I've heard when you get those wide open some, for some reason, I've talked to a couple people, they'll kind of move right and left a little bit on you. This boat is straight as an arrow. Uh, when it comes to driving, it drives like a little, uh, drives like a jet plane on smooth water. I mean, it's just, it cuts great. It moves great through the water. Um, I mean, it, 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 it drives like a sports car in the water, really. I mean, but you're only doing 40 miles an hour, I guess, but it handles great. Um, anyway, uh, the pros on this, this boat is very stable when it comes to, uh, um, fishing i've had myself in the front and a 300 pound guy in the back in a tournament fishing and we can walk from one side to the other i can be on one side and he can walk from one side to the other there might be about a two and a half three inch drop on each on the side when he moves from one side to the other maybe uh it's not that bad at all actually it's really stable very stable when you're fishing um i did have an issue with this boat when i first got it there was a, a uh, con i guess i could say they had a and, and this particular boat itself it had a defect in the paint the paint itself would uh uh was coming off in sheets on the bottom of the boat i contacted my dealer and they contacted g3 g3 sent it back and um and uh repainted the entire boat for free i mean i didn't have to do anything other than it did take them eight weeks to paint it during that time my dealer though had an alpha 211 legend he let me take on tournaments it fishes good and, and drives great. It's, it's a $70,000 boat. This is a $21,700, I think is what I paid for it, boat in 2015. Uh, you can tell a difference in speed-wise, but as far as fishing, this boat, to me, is pretty much as stable as that boat is fishing uh, with two people in it. Um, uh, I mean, it's very stable. Uh, so that's one of the biggest, biggest reasons I bought this boat. It's completely aluminum. Um, there's no wood in it whatsoever. Trackers, they do have wood decks. They are guaranteed or warranted for a certain period of time. But I just wanted a boat that I know was going to last forever. Um, if I was going to buy one, I know it's going to have a really good resale value. Um, let's see, the motor, the Yamaha 90 four-stroke, quiet as can be. I can crank this motor up and I've written people fish with me on a tournament or something. And they're like, man, why don't you going to crank your motor up and get it warm up? You can hear it literally here. They can't hear it at all. And you can literally hear the water coming out of the side of the um the exhaust water to cool the water or cool the motor you can hear it actually coming out of the boat uh louder than the motor is itself when it's idling um it it goes up on plane very fast rpms i mean it, it's 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 just a great motor it's got great torque great pull on it and everything uh gas mileage out of this motor is phenomenal uh buddy of mine's got a bass boat he fishes about two to three times a week spends 250 dollars a month in gas I can fill this thing up. It's got a 21 gallon tank. I can fish all weekend on a tank of gas, no problem. So, uh, and that's, I mean, I'm talking Friday, Saturday, Sunday, um, maybe two full days and a half day. You're good to go on a tank of gas in this boat. It, it, it'll go. I actually, uh, took it a trip. I went, um, from one part in the lake to another part of the lake, 28 mile trek one way. I went down there and back. So, uh, over 50 miles and I still had a half tank of gas in this boat uh, from what i understand the two-stroke motors are having a hard time keeping up with that of course it is a 90 uh but still um like i said before it's a dry ride um but uh one of the pros i want to say is uh, customer service at g3 is awesome uh, apparently because they never question or anything about this boat if i if i ever had a problem like the paint and such they just uh, said send it back we'll fix it we'll make it right um anyways i hope you guys like the review i think i've done uh, everything uh that I can think of right off the top of my head about, oh, uh, one thing I do like to say, or would like to say, is also the seat pole that you see in front of you is not the stock pole. The poles that come with it are cheap. Um, I'm going to be honest with you. I actually got one of them stuck in that plate right there, so I replaced it, and uh, I got it out eventually, but uh, replaced it. Um, I would definitely recommend doing that. They are cheap. I mean, the boat is not like a $70,000 boat, so I wasn't expecting everything to be like a $70,000 boat. I'm just trying to give you the, the ins and outs of this boat particularly. Um, fish is great, very stable. Um, if I was, if, would I buy it again over a tracker? I would have to say yes, I would. Uh, overall, uh, rating, if I was to give it out of a five star rating, I'd probably give it a three and a half, maybe 3.75 star rating there's some like i said some 
the things I could improve on if I was actually designing this boat, I would uh, change the layout a little bit. It does have a lot of room. I'd change the layout, change the rod lockers a little bit. It does have storage here I forgot to show you. Um, that's good storage here, step storage. Uh, it's got storage under both the seats. Um, it doesn't have storage under the middle seat, but it runs completely across. Um, I would definitely replace the 201 Garmin that it comes with with what at least what I did. I got a 93 SV chirp on the uh, back back here with the uh, late uh, HD Ultra Lake chip in it and a 73 SV up there. Awesome. But I'll do those uh, I'll do those a review later. Um, overall it holds up pretty well. Fishes really well. Um, like I said, I, I, if I was to buy, I don't, I've never fished out of a Luma Craft, but um, I like this deck layout better than I do in the Luma Craft. Looks like you got a more room and stuff. Anyway, if you got any questions, just leave them in the comments.